I buried my best friend. And it was actually as is is crazy as this might sound, it was actually one of the coolest funerals I ever been to. Um we was in there deep. Um <laughs> And everybody in there was somebody, uh, my buddy Snoop, he wasn't one of those type of people that he just deal with anybody. If he, if it was either he liked you or he didn't like you. So everybody at the funeral was somebody he liked, even if we didn't know each other. But the way he carried himself while he was alive, um, it, it, uh, it drew respect from everybody. Like we all knew you know, the level of respect to have for each other because of the level of respect we have for him. He was an OG crip, so. Um, but it was it was just really, it was, crazy as it sounded, it was cool, you know. I mean, we was crying and stuff like that, but, you know, we had a good time. We, we sent him home in style, you know. It wasn't no shenanigans. It wasn't no extras, you know. It wasn't none of that. And the stories was, you know, some of them stories was like, yeah, you know, it just reminded me of, you know, back in the day. But we sent him home with style. He looked good. That was probably the first person I ever seen in a casket that looked like the person that was alive. You know, a lot of times you're like, man, I don't even really look like him. But we'll just say, oh, you know, we'll do one of those. But he actually, it actually looked like him. So. You know, everything was everything was everything. I thank God for um you know, for allowing me to know that guy. He was a good guy. I mean he, he wasn't one to play with, but he was actually a good person. Um, actually a good uh, individual to know. So that's what I've been doing over the weekend. We went out there Friday and, you know, just took that time over the weekend to just, you know, celebrate my brother. Um, but now I'm back. It seemed like it's been a long time. I'm like, it's the six. I ain't been on live. I haven't been live since the first. I haven't been live even on the first. So it's been six days I've been off. But um, it was well needed. How's everybody doing out there? Kiki, I know you had a birthday. You turned 30. Check you out. You think you're grown now. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. I pray that you got all of the things you were praying for and or some of the things are on the way um whatever it is whatever your heart's desires i pray that god will bless you uh will bless you with that is did i see michaela coming here let me see i thought i see michaela in here sister michaela how you doing sister rara mom honesty sister la kiki poo oh, it's just uh it's just a i had squad, to work huh? they didn't care <laughs> they normally don't uh uh kiki you got to be working somewhere 10 years 10 15 20 years and they might let you get that day off for your birthday no it depends though but like it's too it's too fresh in the game right now for you so you know it's all good <clears throat> all right before i go into the music sister la wants to come out Hey, big brother, don't tell me you're going to do that to me. You're talking about doubt. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you said? Doubt? Uh, Come yeah. on, huh? <laughs> yeah, <know>. Fresh bread. <laughs> I know. Bakery from the, let the baker. <laughs> let the Lord lead you. I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> I hear you. Well, I, I had a doubt, too, but I, I, I conquered it. And then a lot of folks in my family tell me I'm, they wouldn't have did what I did. Then that, that's when the doubt kind of set in. Mm -hmm. I, I know I had posted about my brother making his transition. He passed February 28th. Oh, I'm sorry. Dude. And I was here all the way to the end. You know, I, I was, I surprised myself when they came, when the funeral home came to take the body away. Yeah. I stayed in here while they did. I watched them while they carried out on the stretcher and everything. Yeah. And um, somebody asked me about that. And I said, I tell you, 10 years ago, I don't think I would have been to do that. But Right. God in me was able for me right. to do that. He gave you that So strength. I didn't sleep in the bed that, that night. You know, I let it kind of air, I guess, the death of leave it or whatever. <laughs> yeah. So I made the bed up um, Wednesday, and I slept in the bed that he died in. And that's what they were talking about. I'm kind of crazy. You should let it on. I've been sleeping in it ever since then. I ain't had no problems. Right. Except for Thursday, I thought maybe 
you know, that's when that doubt right. came in a little bit. Right. Yeah, I was going to say, I was going to say, a bit. Gonna say they, <laughs> they tried it. You know, uh, the enemy, he, he going to try, but you, like you said, yeah. the God in you, you know, these people would say stuff like that, but then they'll live in a house that someone died in and live it there, you know, <laughs> so right? that's, that's, mm -hmm. that superstitious stuff. Um, and you know, mm -hmm. We believers, man. God got you. And then the fact that I'm still here in the house. And I told my brother, I said, because he was kind of concerned you know, my, about my health. Was it healthy for me mentally? You know, I said, I'm fine. Right. And I said, the only reason I'm still here is because the fact I had ordered some vitamins because I don't take a whole lot of unnecessary medicines. You know, I use mm -hmm. natural stuff. Yeah. So I had ordered some vitamins Sunday night because I figured by Friday night, they should be, you know, Friday, they should be here. Not expecting this crazy weather here and rain, snow, and all that kind of stuff. And then they yeah. had that in Kentucky, too. So my package didn't really get here until today. Yeah. And I had to go home in order for that to happen. I was like, wow. I was like, it ain't even came yet. Yeah. And uh, one of my friends took me by my house to get my uh, medicine. And I said, well, maybe when I get back, it'll be there. I said maybe about 30 minutes after I got back here, I heard the doorbell ring. And it was about seven something Eastern time, you know, so it was dark. And I was like, oh, my package came. OK, because I was like, you know, God, I think you're doing this on purpose. You know, think you and it kind of worked a little bit, you know, because I was mm -hmm. like my brother wanted to sell the house. And I was thinking maybe I could live here. But the beginning of me thinking of that was I said, no, I don't think I want to live here because it seemed like that's going backwards. You know what I'm saying? And I didn't mm -hmm. want to go backwards. I'm like, I think I need to be going forwards. And then I thought about it and I was like, 2008, when I finally moved out on my own, I consulted God. Yeah. This time I didn't. I was like using my own self. And I was right, like, you right. know what, God, I didn't consult you. You know, right. I'm saying what I want, but this not might not be what you want for me. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You might want you might want me here, you know. So I've been praying about it. And then my brother told me he, he kind of agreed with me. I need to move forward, you know. Yeah. And then he don't want to sell <clears> me the house either. So he thinks, yeah. Go ahead and sell the house. Go ahead and uh, sell the house. Yeah, but yeah, that's that's what I want to share. Then what you think about the doubt? I'm like, he, we kind of right on the same accord here. He talking about this doubt here. <laughs> you know, God be having us lined up. We all we all in this together. You know, he 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 dropped mm -hmm. it on me too. It, it it's not like I go searching for what to talk about. I you yeah. Know, I just avail myself, and then God will just drop something in my spirit, and I'm like, oh. Okay, well, okay. Let, me, let me study about this. What we, what we about to do here? But you know, um, as far as selling the house or moving out, if 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 that's not what God is um, pushing you to do, you know, just be obedient to God. Um, to God, people will try to freak you out with stuff like you know death and things like that. Um, but to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. We don't believe in being haunted and. You know, um, things like that. Like, just interesting, my little cousin was over here yesterday, and my grandmother, I mean, my, yeah, my grandmother passed away last year in August, and my auntie's husband passed away the year before. But my auntie, she likes to talk. She, like, when we go visit her, she does things like this. Like, we'll be chilling at her house or whatever, and she'll, oh, there go John. Like, she speaks like to the dead like she thinks she's speaking to dead people and things like that mm -hmm. and, you know and i had to tell my you know tell my auntie like that's not a wise thing to do god doesn't want us to you know worship the dead or or acknowledge the dead when they're dead um you know so those type of things shouldn't bother us when like say someone passed away where we live you know we shouldn't let those type of things get to us i know i, I can't tell a person how to feel when someone passes away but you know just for comfort you know nobody's gonna bother you or there's not no dead person there watching you or in the house or anything like that sometimes we right we, you know we like to do that and then it'll freak us out like i need to get out this house because i feel like you know just all you gotta do is a good spring cleaning anoint your house and mm -hmm. you know and, and let the lord build you up in there and you know even if you just stay there to get the house in a in a condition to where it can be sold for more than what it's worth right mm -hmm. now you know that type of thing but you know i wouldn't i wouldn't run nowhere too fast like you said it you hit it right on the head consult god if god is telling you to go go god tell you to stay mm -hmm. stay because you know when right. you tell us <laughs> it's, it's for our yeah good. we have to be obedient mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. definitely yeah. definitely
So, you know. All right, I'm going to go back down now. I just okay, sis. To, okay. To, yeah. Thank you okay. for sharing that. God bless you. Uh-huh. God bless oh, you I too. wanted to say this too. Um, another thing. God is showing strength through you to your family members. So, you know, you keep on hmm. being strong because that's what they're doing. That's why they, I wouldn't, if I was you, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. That's why they're doing all that because they don't have the strength you have. They don't have the courage that you have. You know, they, they're mm -hmm. not walking as close to God as you are. Not saying they're not walking mm -hmm. with God, but for you to still be standing your ground and still, you know, staying there till they took him out the house and all of these things that the other family members wouldn't have done. You know, God gave you the strength to do it because imagine if nobody did it everybody will be feeling bad like we didn't even stay there to his you know it'll be on everybody's mm -hmm. conscience so you were you know god used you to show strength yep exactly mm -hmm. god used you to show strength so you know just keep letting them use you because there's some people around and, you and then my weak. brother also the one that you know that died he you know when i talked to him while when he when he told me about what they told him his death sentence was and i told him we're not naming and claiming that he told me, "Well, I didn't want to tell you because I'm because you're on your vacation, right?" Mm -hmm. So when I when I, while I was here, like I said, while I was here, while he was sick, and I was helping helping him in his last in his last stages, my niece told me he wanted you to have that vacation. He know you needed that vacation, and I'm also thinking maybe that's the reason why God put me there because he didn't want me to go through his you know from way he deteriorated. You know right. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He was healthy, then he just vastly deteriorated mm -hmm. and i got to see the last part where you know they seen him from from beginning to end and i got to see the last part yeah yeah because he didn't want to he didn't want a memorial service or a funeral so he's being cremated so yeah i yeah. got to see the last the last of his life yeah well and i'm thank i'm thankful that for him you know mm -hmm. doing that for me yeah for doing yeah. that for me and i pray god give you more strength sis. So you you you're gonna be the yeah. anchor to hold it down so you know that my pastor had my former pastor have always told me that he said you you're a proxy for your family you don't realize it but you are I'm like oh put that load on me then okay <laughs> <laughs> you got it you can handle it <laughs> yeah you know you got people okay i'm going down too. now <laughs> okay god okay. bless you sis god bless you all right yeah so later on be touching on i mean well there's a few things but i, I think i'm gonna just do them one at a time um, I'm just, t I'm, I'm going to, I'm touching on things, sins that have been normalized. And you know, my first one is doubt. I'm going to talk about doubt. A lot of people don't believe that doubt is a sin, but to doubt God is to separate yourself from him. You know, basically saying he doesn't, he can't do what he do. You know, he ain't who he is. I don't believe, you know, that type of thing. So I'm going to get into that a little later. I'm going to play a couple of songs here. Um, and then we're going to do that. Like I said, I didn't have nothing planned. Um, I'm just coming out of, you know, mourning and uh, burying my brother. So, you know, I had to, <laughs> all right, y'all, it's time to get back out here. And I'm back out here, y'all. Seems like I've been gone forever. It's good to see y'all. Every time I see y'all pop up in the live, I get pumped up. So, um, I thank God for you guys uh, being here. Yeah, so we're going yeah, to get into it a little later. We're going to talk about some stuff. Um, but I'm going to play a few songs here. Thank you, madam. Thank you. God bless you. Um, I'm going to play a few songs here, then we're going to get into that. We're going to be reading James, I believe James 1, 5 through 8, if I'm not mistaken. If I'm not mistaken, yeah. Got to find my notes, y'all. I'm all over the place. Um, hey, thank you, sis. Appreciate you. I got to find my notes. But yeah, we're going to be talking about doubt. You know, y'all pray my strength. Um, you know, it's interesting. I've been talking about praying for your leaders and, you know, the leaders of your churches and the leaders of your community and those that are, you know, people that represent the gospel and God and Jesus Christ. Pray for them because the enemy is on heavy attack. God is, I'm going to, I'll share it a little later, but God, I don't know if it was a, a vision or a Holy Ghost heads up. I like that. Or a Holy Ghost heads up, but God was just showing me some things about how the enemy um is attacking so i might touch bases on that a little bit in uh in a minute here but yeah let me just get into this these songs and then we gonna do what we do best amen thank you miss leisha i appreciate you you right, let's go lord we love you father god i just come to you asking that you would use me as a vessel 
for your glory. Lord, let the words that come from my mouth be the words that you want spoken and not anything of myself. Father God, I pray that you allow what I talk about to reach fertile ground, to reach fertile hearts. Lord, plant the seed of you in your people that they may grow in you, grow in the knowledge of you, grow in the understanding of you. And Father God, I will be so very careful to give you the glory, honor and praise in Jesus name. Amen. Yes, that fresh, fresh fire. Um. Yeah, we're going to be talking about doubt a little bit here, y'all. I ain't going to try to get too carried away. I didn't really do too much uh, in-depth studying, but, you know, I don't run the show. God does. I just go when he say go, and uh, we move from there. Um, there are, I'm, this, is go, this is part one of four topics that I'm going to be talking about. Uh, thank you, Kiki. God bless you. Um, and it's, I titled it normalized sins sins that have been normalized in today's culture sins that have been normalized in the world um sins that just they just have been normalized that's and you know i got four of them but today i'm gonna talk about doubt doubt is the first one um the next one i'm gonna do tomorrow is gonna be on horoscopes so some of y'all don't agree with me on that one so y'all might not want to show up because it's gonna be some feet balled up in some shoes and some butts clenched tight and some I don't want to hear this but you know I have to tell the truth about things uh, so tomorrow we're gonna talk about horoscopes <laughs> and then the third one is unforgiveness these are normalized sins and the third one is unforgiveness and then the fourth one which will be on Thursday is pride so we got doubt, horoscopes, unforgiveness, and pride. These are things that have been normalized in the culture of today, um, you know, and people don't see a problem with it, but God wants us to know the truth about it. Um, the, tr the truth is what sets us free. Some of us, you know, some of us are in chains and are in bondage and don't even know it because we don't know the truth you know um so you know the lord has just imparted on me to talk about these things so today we're talking about doubt um and god gave me this uh in, in um what is this what is this james chapter one james chapter one verse five through eight james chapter one verse five through eight and the, the scripture reads as this, it says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach. And if it be, if it be given to him, I mean, it will be given to him. I'm sorry, but let him ask in faith with no doubting, with no doubting, with no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the winds. For, for let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. So that scripture, it says in this scripture that if you want wisdom, Ask God and he will give it to you freely without reproach. Um, he's not sorry that he gave it to you, you know, and if you doubt, don't expect anything from God that goes with anything. You know, I was talking to this uh, individual the other day. Um, he was was well, something wrong with his ears. He can't really hear like that. And I told him, I said, man, if you want to be healed, you know, uh, all you got to do is ask God to heal you. And he, he said, he said, yeah, uh, I've been to a church and they prayed for my ears, but I didn't believe it was going to work anyways. But I just went and I told him, I said, that's why it didn't work <laughs> because you didn't believe it has nothing to do with the person um, praying for you. If the, if the person that's praying for you believes and you don't believe, 
It's not going to work. We both have to be on one accord. We both have to believe. Isn't it interesting that one person can believe and the other person don't believe and it won't work for that person. But if both people believe, it'll work. Really believe. Not, not, it, not double crossing in your mind like, I want to believe you saying it with your mouth, but you don't in your heart. We do this a lot. It's, this is a, this is a very, um, this is a very powerful thing that attacks us. We say we believe, but then as we're saying we believe, doubt is running all through our minds. We, I, I believe it, but you're saying it, but as you're saying it in your mind, you can hear clearly this might not work. I don't know if this going to work. I don't know about this one. You know, and that right there is what God hears. He hears you in your mind saying, I don't know. You can say out your mouth all day, but if you don't feel like it's going to work, that not feeling like it part is what takes precedence. Just like you can say something and you can know without even saying it out your mouth, like, yeah, this is God. I know this is going, this is for me. And it works out for you. But you notice when you do that, you don't in your mind, you don't say, but what if it doesn't work out when you do that right there? It messes up. It messes up your faith. It's called doubting. Um, so I tell them I'm gonna read the scripture again, but I'm gonna just read it all the way through this time. It says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God who will who gives to all liberally and without reproach and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind for let not that man suppose he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. <laughs> Amen. Now watch this. I want to read something. Um, I'm going to read something. word wealth. It says, Double-minded, this is the Greek word for double-minded is dipsukos. I don't know how to speak Greek, so I just messed that whole thing up. Uh, dipsukos, D-I-P-S-U-K-O-S. And then it says, of divided loyalty, undecided. In the New Testament, in the New Testament, the double-minded person has divided loyalty between God and and himself or herself doubt towards God or faith in in one's own efforts the only two uses of that word I spelled dip 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 sucus, is I mean in the New Testament are the epistles of James 1 and 8 and James 4 and 8 and James 1 and 8 the believer may pray for wisdom in his trials. Um, and it says, and be assured that God will answer if the request is made in faith. I'm going to read this again. It says, in James 1 and 8, the believer may pray for wisdom in his trials and be assured that God will answer if the request is made in faith. However, with one single minded faith, there will be no answer from the Lord. However, my, my bad, I read that wrong. However, without single minded faith, there will be no answer from the Lord. Single minded faith. This means I don't care what it looked like. I don't care what I could see with my eyes. I don't care what the doctor said. I don't care what how many times it's been proven to be true. I have faith that God is going, this is single-minded faith, stubborn faith. You know, sometimes people will have faith that makes other people upset. <laughs> sometimes people will have faith that makes other people upset. You'll say, you know, I believe that God's going to heal this, or I believe that God's going to fix this. And a person will say, don't be stupid though. They, they say stuff like that to make you feel like you're retarded or you're stupid. Sorry for using that word retarded. They say things like that to make you feel like you're stupid. And then what that does is pulls you off of your faith holy high. Then you start coming into agreement with people that doubt. So this single-minded faith means there's no other option in my mind but this faith that I have 
in what I believe God is going to give me. So it says that right there it says, however, without single minded faith, there will be no answer from the Lord. James depiction of such a double minded person is that he is unstable in all his ways, which you find in James um, one and eight. James also later rebukes the pride and corruption of his hearers by again calling them double minded in James chapter four, verse eight. Um, so basically what the Lord wants us to know in this in this scripture is you can't have two thoughts when you want something from God. You have to. I know. Listen, even if you're doubting, it's still safe to be like, Lord, I need help to believe this. I, I, I want to believe this, but I keep getting these doubts. Lord, I need you to move on my behalf. Wait for an answer. <laughs> Wait for an answer. Stop thinking so much and just let the Lord tell you and just bank on that. I heard God tell me it is so, so we going with it is so. And you have to lock in on that because if you don't, the devil will start throwing all these other things in your mind. And some of the scenarios that the devil throw into your mind sound logical and make sense. And you'll be like, you know what? That do make more sense. And you will doubt your way out of seeing the move of God. Amen. So the Bible tells us we need to have a single minded faith, not a double minded faith. He said that means you're unstable in all your ways. I want to read something else. I want to read something else. I'm going to read uh, this little right right down. It says the wisdom that the wisdom that may be had by asking in faith is not intellectual knowledge or philosophical speculation but spiritual understanding of the purpose of trials when god grants a when god grants a gift he does it liberally and without reproach that is generously not condescendingly or grudgingly basically god is not giving you a gift and going here you get on my nerve he don't do it like that he yes he gives you the gift because it's for something you're going through. For instance, when the right here in verse one and five in James one and five, it says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. This wisdom, like it says right here, the wisdom that you had that may be had by asking in faith is not intellectual knowledge or philosophical speculation it's not something that you read in the book this wisdom that god gives you is not some study you did in college it's not some some credential that you supposed to deserve because you studied this or you learned this or you found this out the wisdom that god gives you is to help you deal with trials so when you're going through something when you're up against something that's making you want to quit that's making you doubt that's making you want to walk away from the lord the wisdom that god gives you helps you have poise and stay in there and maneuver through your trials and tribulations without falling out without giving up on god without wavering in your faith without having doubt so this wisdom is not Knowledge type of wisdom is knowing how to operate when trials and tribulations come. God said, ask me when you're going through something, ask me for the wisdom to get through it. And I will give you the wisdom freely and happily. I'm not going to say humans. This is what humans do. Say, for instance, I gave you some advice about something that can help you, but you forgot. And I give it to you, the advice again. And you forgot. And I give you to the advice again and you forget. And, and I can, you keep doing this. Eventually I'm going to get frustrated with you. Like I told you already. Why do you keep asking me the same thing over and over? That's what humans do. But God, no matter how many times you go to him, Lord, I need your wisdom again. He gives it to you with joy. He gives it says without reproach, meaning he's doing it generously with not, without condescending. He doesn't have an attitude about it. He's not upset about it. He wants you to come to him for what you need to get through whatever you're going through. So it can help you with what? Your faith. Remember, we're talking about doubt here, ladies and gentlemen. This is these are the key tactics that God give you to help you stay faithful. 
These are the key tactics that God gives you to stay faithful. Ask me for wisdom, not me, but God. I'm just speaking like that. Ask me for wisdom when you're going through something and it'll stop you from doubting. If you don't ask God for wisdom and you keep getting attacked, you start saying, maybe I need to try another way because this God stuff ain't working out for me. But when you come to God and say, Lord, I need the wisdom, I'm under attack right now. My faith is being tested right now. Uh, Lord, I, I'm doubt. I feel like I'm about to start doubting what you told me. I need your wisdom. God will pour into you the, the adequate wisdom that you need to get through the thing that you're going through. Amen. So he tells us right there in one and five, if you lack anything. Ask God for the wisdom and he will give it to you freely. He's giving it to you because this is his way of helping you. Wisdom is, man, having wisdom, man, wisdom gets you through some rough times. Wisdom combats against doubts in your mind when you're going through something. You, wisdom gives you a spiritual understanding of what God is allowing to happen in your life and how to get through it. That's what wisdom does not make you smart it's not how many books you read it's not what school you graduated from it's not none of them masters and credentials you got hanging up on your wall it's simply saying lord i need the wisdom to get through this and the more you do this the more you become wise and then you can help others in the areas of wisdom amen so I wanted to read one more thing about this double-minded thing. It says a double-minded man is one drawn in two, in two opposite directions. A double-minded man is one drawn in two opposite directions. One is God, one is self. You got to choose a direction. God wants us to depend on him. When we depend on him, he makes a way. When we depend on us, we got to do all this extra stuff to try to make stuff work out for us. And then when you get that figured out, something else break. It's kind of like an old car. You know, you, oh, finally, I got my transmission fixed. Uh-oh, there go the engine. Oh, I got to get the engine fixed. Uh-oh, the tire popped. But the Lord spiritually will give you a new car, will give you a brand new what you need to keep going. But when you try to figure things out for yourself with God trying to help you and you're not receiving the help from God, he allows everything to break down in your life. You know why he does this? Because he wants to help you. Because when he helps you, the help is real help. He gets the glory he gets a testimony out your life. He gets a changed individual. He gets a believer. He gets a strong faith person. All of these things come when you allow the Lord to help you. But when you do it yourself, it make you doubt God. Because I did that. Not God. I worked hard for this. God didn't bless me with this. I got up on my own. God, when you, when you depend on yourself, you discredit God. But when you depend on God, you ain't got to worry about what you can do because he got you. Amen. So I want to, I'm not done reading that. A double minded man is someone drawn in two opposite directions. His allegiance is divided. And because of his lack of, his lack of sincerity, he, how do you say this word? Vacillates between belief and disbelief sometimes thinking that god will help him uh, look i gotta read that again i butchered that it says his allegiance is divided and because of his lack of sincerity he vacillates between belief and disbelief sometimes thinking that god will help him and at other times giving up all hope in him such a person is unstable in all his ways. Not only is his prayer life, I mean, not only in his prayer life, the lack of consistency is exercised, is the, it, the lack of consistency in his exercise of faith betrays his general character. So basically it's saying, when you're double-minded, you're being pulled in two different directions. Sometimes you believe God will work it out. And then sometimes you say, maybe God ain't going to help me. And what this does is it destroys your character as a faithful person in God, a believer, because you 
Listen, God is good all the time. We have to understand that if God doesn't do something for us, it's because it was not in his will. Mainly, if we pray for something and don't receive it, it's because that was not in God's will. Wisdom helps us understand that. That's why the scripture says, if you lack anything, ask God for wisdom. Because wisdom will tell you, oh, I didn't get that new car because that new car wasn't in the will of God. God bless you, queen. That new car wasn't in God's will for me. This doesn't mean you're not going to get a new car. This doesn't mean that. This just means that right now is not the time for that. But wisdom helps you understand that. If you don't have no wisdom, you'll pout, you'll murmur, you'll complain, you'll doubt, you'll give up on God like the script, like this whole teaching is said. You'll give up on God. You'll be double-minded. Sometimes God bless me, sometimes he don't. Wisdom help you understand that. Maybe that's not for me right now. Amen? So it teaches us that when you are double-minded, it deteriorates your characteristics in God. It makes you, God is looking at you like, you wasn't complaining when I was blessing you all the mother times. Now you don't got something. Now you doubting or you now you worried you were sick and, and, and couldn't get out of this situation. And I brought you out of this situation. So now another tribulation or trial has came up. And now you don't know if I'm real. It, it's people we've been saved 20, 30 years. And soon as the attack happened, we split second. We'll forget about God. We have to be reminded. Wait a minute. I know God didn't bring me this far to leave me. Wisdom says that. No wisdom will have you worried. Oh, my God. Oh. We, you'll forget all of the other stuff God has brought you out of. God has delivered you from this. God has saved you from that. God has healed you of that. God has brought this back together. God put all of these things God has been doing throughout your life with God builds a portfolio of faith. If you just slow down and pay attention, if you can look at all of the things God has brought you from, brought you through, you will get through this next thing. If you don't understand, what do you do? James one and five, Lord, I need the wisdom because I don't understand what's going on with me right now. I need your wisdom. By you falling back into the arms of God, that's praying for wisdom. Instead of trying to figure out something on your own or jumping the gun, moving too fast, getting worried and doubting yourself right up out of the hands of God, doubting yourself, diluting your faith because of all of this doubt, because you worried about the thing you see in front of you. And the Bible tells us to walk by faith and not by sight, because if you walk by sight, it'll help you doubt. If you walk by faith, you don't care about doubt. Amen. So it says here, <laughs> it says here, a double minded man or woman is unstable in all of his ways. We think about this word unstable. Have you ever seen an unstable person? Have you ever seen someone that is unstable? Even when a person gets injured, say someone got hit by a car or somebody got shot, when they say he's unstable, that means we don't know. It's not looking good. When he's stable, it's, that means, okay, y'all can calm down. Don't worry about nothing. The Bible says an, a double-minded person is unstable in all of his ways. That means it's not looking good for you. Lord, I believe you sometime. I, I believe you for the easy stuff. That doesn't take faith. The easy stuff doesn't take faith. If you have a check with the money on the check and the money is in the account, you don't have to have faith that the money that you're going to get the money. You already got it. That's the easy stuff. Faith requires when your check get lost in the system and your rent is due tomorrow and you know God going to work it out. That the faith, there go faith right there. I ain't worried about it. I ain't worried about it. We're going to take this is going to get taken care of. God, God didn't bring me this far for me to lose all my stuff over a check being lost. Let me call my 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 landlord or let me call the bank or whoever you pay your check to to keep your house and, and, and get an extension and wait for the check. And don't even worry about it because it's going to come through. That's faith. And that's moving in the faith. But once you, oh, my God, the check law, I'm about to lose my house. Now you speak in all of this demise over yourself 
And all it is is a simple call in and get an extension. Something happened in the mail system. But wisdom will teach you that. <laughs> wisdom will teach you that. Hold on. Everything going to be. If you don't have no wisdom, you're going to freak out every time something happened. If you got wisdom, you ain't tripping when stuff happened. What did it say? Let me read it. And that's interesting. You type that right there, queen, because I'll just read something about why God gives us the wisdom. It says right here. I'm going to read it again since you came in. It says the wisdom that may be had by asking in faith is not intellectual knowledge or philosophical speculation, but spiritual understanding for the purpose of trials. And you put, thank you, God, for my faith. I've been going through so hard trials. Wow. You wasn't in here when I read this earlier, but that's why God gave it. In James 1 and 5, it says, if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. Liberally and without without reproach means he gives it to you generously without condescending. He's not condescending about it. He's here. I want to help you. Take this wisdom because this will help you figure out how to get through the trials. The wisdom isn't about who's smart. It has nothing to do with intellectual knowledge and uh, philosophical speculation it has nothing to do with how smart you are, how much you study, how what you done discovered. It has nothing to do with that. It has something to do with how to operate when trials come. So you won't lose your faith in God. So you won't doubt that God will bring you through it. So anytime you feel like God's not going to be there, ask God for wisdom. I'm going to say that again. Anytime you feel like God is not going to be there or God is not there with you in something you're going through, ask God for wisdom. He will give it to you right on the spot freely. All you got to do is just wait. And then next thing you know, you'll start thinking how to figure your way out through this without feeling um, depressed or anxiety, anxiety or scared or um, uh, doubtful. The wisdom will help you see your way through the trial light and, and understand why God is allowing it to happen to you. Wisdom is a gift of the Holy Spirit. It's a gift. One of the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit, wisdom. Some people walk in the office of wisdom. They just, ain't, no matter what happened, they ain't, I ain't worried about that. God got me. I ain't worried about that. God got me. Man, that's we need to ask God. We need to pray and ask God to put us on that level. Amen. So that was, you know, that was my first little part teaching about doubt. There's another scripture I want to read about doubt. Um, you know, this one is a little, it's a little different to me. I was, I was reading it. I'm like, Lord, because I read, I was reading it in a uh, New King James version and it was kind of like, you know, I couldn't really understand it the way I tried to understand it. And the Holy Spirit said, get the New Living Testament. I mean, get the New Living Translation and read it there. You get a better understanding. So this one is a, it's, it's a little bit different version of doubt than what I just read. And you find this in Romans chapter 14, verse, I'm going to start at 19, verse 19. Romans chapter 14, verse 19. It says, so then let us aim for harmony in the church and not, I mean, and try to build each other up. Do not tear apart the work of God over what you eat. I'm going to read that again. Do not tear apart the work of God over what you eat. Remember, all food, all foods are acceptable, but it is wrong to eat something if it makes another person stumble. It is wrong to eat something. You listen to me. It is wrong to eat something if it makes another person stumble. So it says, it says, um, it is better not to eat meat or drink wine or do anything else if it might cause another believer to stumble. You may believe there's nothing wrong with what you are doing, but keep it between yourself and God blessed are those who don't feel guilty for doing something they have decided is right. But if you have doubt about whatever, I mean, about whether or not you should eat something, you are sinning. If you go ahead and do it, it says for you are not following your convictions. If you do anything you believe is not right. 
you are sinning. So basically, in a nutshell, it's saying, whatever, say for instance, you eat pork. It don't bother you. You enjoy it. It don't make you feel bad about eating pork. But if someone, another believer around you says, I don't eat pork in the Bible, because you know they do got scriptures in the Old Testament that talk about not eating pork and all this stuff. So if a believer is around you and he say, I don't eat pork, um, for the sake of them staying faithful, you don't eat pork around them. The Bible is basically saying, don't, if it makes somebody else stumble, don't do it in front of them. There, you know, there's people that drink wine. But if another person had a drinking problem and you want to have a glass of wine in front of this person and it entices them to go back to drinking, you're wrong for that. That's why it says keep it between you and God. You know, there are some people out here that believe in the Lord and they tell people ain't nothing wrong with smoking weed. There's people out here that believe in God and tell people it ain't nothing wrong with drinking. The Bible says don't get drunk. They know how to bring that and deliver that to a person without there being um, any bad feeling about it. But what they don't realize is by them doing that, they cause others to stumble. If you drink wine, drink your wine in, in, in private. Don't pull your wine out, drink it in front of a believer and, and then testify to people. I'm still blessed. God's still looking out for me. The Lord answer my prayers all the time and I drink wine. When you do that, you're causing someone else to stumble. Because they, the conviction, if you look at the scripture, at the end of the scripture, it says, let me read it, let me read it. It says, if you do anything, you, if you do anything you believe is not right, you are sinning. Go up some more. Where is it? Where is it? It says, but if you have doubts whether or not you should be eating something, you're where let me go up some more. Let me go up some more. Where was it at? Ah, I lost myself. Well, it talks about if you do something and you if you do something and you know it's wrong, or you feel no, not know it's wrong. If you do something and you feel like it's wrong. And you do it anyway, you're sinning because you're not following your conviction. If if you do something and you feel convicted about it, that's God showing you not to do it. But if you do it anyways, you're sinning. If you do it anyways, because you're the conviction is came, you know you're not supposed to be doing, but you do it anyways. That you have to repent for that. Because there's a conviction there. You know what I'm saying? So the, this scripture tells us don't do that, don't do things around other believers that may cause them to stumble. Because now it causes, it causes a problem in there. Now doubt comes in. Well, if that, well, I don't think nothing wrong with it because that person, what God got, what God has delivered you from and what God is sustaining you in and don't want you to do is what God don't want you to do. You know, sometimes we, we, and don't, don't, don't take this the wrong way, but sometimes God will tell you to stop drinking and you will tell everybody else they need to stop drinking because you got to stop drinking. Sometimes God will tell you to stop eating pork and you will go around and tell everybody else they need to stop eating pork because God told you to stop eating pork. God deals with everybody, every individual and their sins or whatever is wrong and their convictions are personal. That's why the scripture says right here, it says, you might believe nothing is, you, it says you might believe you may believe there is nothing wrong with what you are doing, but keep it between yourself and God. That's something you take to God. Lord, is it okay if I'm eating pork? I know, you know, the Bible, it tells us in the scripture, all in, in the New King James Version, it say, all foods are pure. And here it says, all foods are acceptable. So, if somebody is struggling with something or they don't eat that because they feel like it's not healthy for them, let them keep doing that. You don't have to go, it's okay. It's okay. I eat pork all the time. I'm in great shape. Ain't nothing wrong. Look at me. I'm healthy. You, you, you do that, you'll cause somebody else to stumble. This is between you and God. If God is allowing you to eat pork, that's between you and God. This is what this scripture is saying. And it's so uh, it goes on to say, but if you have doubts, this is the reason why I said this is a different type of doubts. <laughs> if you have doubts about whether or not you should eat something, you are sinning. So this is basically saying you go get this sweet, you go get this apple pie. You like, ooh, 
I know I shouldn't be doing this. And then you eat it that you, you committed a sin because you have a doubt in you. Now, if you just get that papaya, throw it in the car, like, oh, we about to tear that up later. It's all good. But if you if you got to stop for a moment and be like, I don't know if I should be doing follow your conviction. Y'all following me? Y'all understand what I'm saying? If you get like, oh, Lord, I'll, if you get one of them type of feelings, follow your conviction. Because if you overpower, I, I feel like I shouldn't be doing this. And you overpower that or override that you have committed a sin because there is a tug in there. God is showing you. That's why you feel like that. God is saying, yeah, you shouldn't. You shouldn't eat that. You feel the way you do because you ain't got no business eating that. But don't uh, and then do it anyways. It, it tells you that it's a sin. So that that form of doubt right there is what I, you know, what I wanted to highlight. You know, if you if 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 in your mind you know, that doubt, not 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 I know God ain't gonna do it doubt, just I shouldn't be doing this doubt. That type of doubt right there. If you get that feeling, follow your convictions. This help you, this 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 carves you and shapes you more and more in your righteousness with God. It carves you and shapes you, it makes you um feel good about yourself. Have you ever been tempted? to do something and you fight past that temptation and then and the temptation goes away. God bless you, brother. And you fight past that temptation and temptation goes away. Don't you feel good because you didn't fall for it this time? I know I do. I probably can't speak for everybody else, but sometime when temptation come over me and I sit there and I fight with it and not do it, I go pray or, or I go do something to, to change my mind about that thing that I know I ain't supposed to be doing. When I overcome it and it goes away, I feel so good. I feel like I accomplished something. I really feel like I accomplished something like, yes, I'm so glad I didn't fall for that this time because the devil is going to tempt us. He's going to, he never stops trying. He never stops trying and he tries to catch us at our weakest moments. He tried to catch us slipping when we ain't paying no attention. Now we sitting there wrestling with that thing. God is saying, don't do it. You trying to ignore it. The devil said, come on, come on. It's all good. God going to forgive you anyways. Come on. But then after you do it, you feel so bad, even though God will forgive you. If you still alive and you come to the Lord and repent, he going to forgive you. But if there's no conviction feeling in there, you need to be worried about something. If you're just doing it and you like, I'm just going to ask for forgiveness. 